Okay, so this is the second practice video uh, where we're going through some crating exercises. Uh, if you followed the last one, you will notice the shapes were very, very simple indeed, and a lot of them involved effectively just drawing cross-sectional profiles, a bit like this shape at the front, and then extruding them back in various different directions. So some of the foci with this, the reasons why we're kind of uh, doing it and the things that we want to uh, really think about when we're doing this again are proportion, so making sure that things are... Uh, uh, the, the distances on different axes are uh, equal to each other as uh, to, to keep the, the object looking uh, realistic effectively. Um, we also want to think about our um, axes, so we want to make sure that our uh, y axis is 90 degrees from our base of our page or coming off at 90 degrees from uh, a horizon I suppose. Uh, we also want to make sure our two lines when we're drawing an isometric here are coming off at 30 degrees from that horizon or the base of our page as well. So before we um, get too far into it, we're going to start the drawing here. Okay, so looking at this first shape, uh, you can see how this, this page has moved on a little bit from the last one because what we're doing now is in the previous video where we only had one shape to draw, we're now drawing shapes that are combined with each other. Now, what we're going to do is think about this and kind of like we can look through or create a, an x-ray image of the shape behind the shape where it's cutting in. So if we follow these lines down, obviously that will go like this and we can see roughly that's where it looks like the base of the object is. In fact, we could probably come across like that and work out where that bottom is and then bring this kind of uh, background shape in. So we can see there that would be where that black, uh, sorry, that, that cuboid shape in the background goes down to at the back of the object. And then we can see this bit is kind of squeezed or fitted onto the front. So we're going to have a go at drawing this first of all. So key things when we start doing any drawing is to make sure obviously that we get our proportions right and our first line dictates the proportions and obviously the size of the drawing as well. So I'm just going to draw a line like this Go and think about ghosting, practicing your line, think about removing from the elbow. And although I can't do it here, think about turning the page around to a, a way that is comfortable. My comfortable angle here is like this. You will see me drawing at different angles. I'd suggest not doing this, especially when you first start out, because if, if you can draw this one line, as I've said in the first video or the second video, it's going to make it a lot easier because that's the only line you have to do uh, over and over again to make it uh, accurate and to make your drawings more consistent. So there's my first line and my second line's coming off here and I'm going to make a decision as to the size of the object straight away. I'm going to say that's my decision there. That's going to be the uh, the distance along the x-plane which is going to give me this distance here. So there we go. There's my first distance there and I'm going to practice that and make sure that's accurate to the back as well. So it looks very much like a regular square on the top. So I'm going to just draw that in and then now we're going to come down and use our kind of extrusion of this cross sectional profile down along the Y plane once, twice, three lines down again, making sure that these are parallel to each other like that. Now it looks very much like proportionally speaking, this distance here is about half of the distance of the whole cube. So I'm going to just take that measurement there. Notice I'm kind of practicing this with my hand, getting a muscle memory on the distance and then tracking it down a couple of times like that to give me something that is kind of uh, accurate like that and then I'm just going to complete those last two lines one on the X plane there and one that I just done on the Z plane there to create my rear cube. Now as we can see um, this bottom part of this cube here okay it comes along like this and it kind of cuts in uh, to around about probably about a third of the way up the shape like this so I'm going to estimate it around about here uh, is where that that kind of line is there so I'm taking that line there and we can also track it around the side like this as well, I'm just tracking those two lines in to show where this kind of line divides up the, the back shape, okay? At that point there where it touches the edge, we're obviously gonna come out on this plane here. This is our um, depth plane, our Z plane there, and it's coming out like this from the shape, just making sure that those are parallel to each other again. And we're gonna come out a distance that looks to be about the same as this. And it's worth checking these things because sometimes your eyes play trick on you um, that they look different uh, when you don't actually measure them or, or kind of check your work as you're going along. So it comes out to about this point here and then I'm going to drop one more line in like this on the X-plane like that coming in making sure it's parallel with that side. Now on this side we can see this line is kind of or this point is where it kind of stops and it cuts into the shape and that looks very much like around about the center line of where the shape is there. So what I'm going to do is just draw across across the shape like this like this and at that point where it's the center I'm just going to come down like that and then say that point there so I've drawn across to divide up the shape I found where that center line is along that uh, center part there and I've come down to where it intersects that point there and that is where I've decided my center is so at that point there I'm going to come out again on the x-plane like this and decide that that 
is the point there. And you can see that that comes along quite nicely with uh, what we're talking about there with the uh, uh, distances and things like this. So it looks proportional. Um, it comes out here, much the same as how much it comes out this side. So again, I'm practicing that, get my muscle memory for the distance, and then tracking that measurement across like this. So again, the focus here is about quick sketching. It's not about getting the rulers out and measuring these shapes perfectly. It's about confidently uh, sketching and creating things that are as near to uh, perfect as we can get them. And as you, the more you practice, the more accurate you'll find that your, um, your eye and your hand become, okay? Uh, so this comes out here. And what we, we think is that this shape seems to end at the, uh, the bottom of where the uh, kind of cube ends. So we need to find out where this is gonna come down to, okay? So we need to find a point where the bottom of the cube is, which is like this, for example. So what we're gonna do is find that bottom point there, and we're gonna inference this line, which means take this distance out, if you've watched other videos like this, and then we're gonna inference it out like this. So we're taking that line out there, because I'm saying at that point is where the base of the, the box is, and it comes out along this direction. Now, if we then take this corner, which is where this point is, and go down, where those two points cross over, you can see that that is the base, that is the bottom. So I know this point here is in line, it's level with, with the bottom of the other part. So there we go, we found that base, I'm gonna now drop this line across, inference this across to the other side like this, because then we can find the distance here as well. So we're making sure that all our points are in line with each other by just using parallel lines and taking one distance from one point to another. I can then inference this distance back like this and then where that point and those two intersect again, there we go, we've got the bottom of our object there. So I'm just gonna go around this very quickly with a fine liner. I'm gonna do some other videos at some point on uh, line weights. Um, I would suggest when you are doing line weights, if you're gonna use these to kind of tidy up your drawings, it's uh, often quite beneficial to take a little bit more time than I'm doing here. As you can see, I've got some lines that are overrunning and uh, things like this. But I think for the purpose of this, it does help to kind of see what's going on on the page. I'm not gonna apply any rendering at the moment for these videos, because I wanna get through these shapes. So, our next shape, much the same principle. It's taking a shape and then adding shapes to it. So we're gonna start with this top uh, cuboid shape, rectangular cuboid on the top. And again, my first lines are gonna dictate exactly uh, the, the height of my shape. I'll put that a little bit close to uh, the next object. So we're gonna go quite small with this one to make sure I can fit it on the page. So I've got my first couple of lines drawn in there. That distance there is dictated how far I'm gonna go across. And if we look proportionally, it looks very much like that distance is around about a third of the shape. I was gonna break that down into three there. I'd say that's what it is. So I'm gonna just kind of estimate where that might be. I'm gonna say it's about there, and we're creating our first rectangular um, cross section at the top, okay? We can now bring these lines down along the Y plane. One, two, three, I'm drawing them together to make sure that my hands practiced in drawing those shapes. And the distance going down looks very similar to the kind of distance along the Z plane there. So I'm kind of making sure that those two distances are the same to each other. I bring the line to the front where it intersects the plane. I then take it across like this to make my first rectangular cuboid on the top. Now looking at this shape, it looks quite straightforward because it looks like it comes out the same distance uh, and just adds to it each time on that on that uh, axis, the Z axis, and it comes out and does the same along this uh, x-axis as well. So I'm going to draw a line coming out on the x-axis like this and a line coming out parallel with that one there on the z-axis like this, making sure these are parallel. Please turn your paper around. I can see that that is a little bit out because my hand is not used to being held at this angle. It likes to be over here where I'm I'm practiced and I've, I've learned how to draw. So I'm going to come out like this and then take that distance and estimate it there and then use again parallel lines coming across like this coming out from that side, again looking to be parallel with all of these others on that uh, X plane, and then the same here, I'm estimating the distance and then coming out in this point here like this. There we go, we've got two lines drawn in now. So now we're just gonna come down again and repeat the whole process again. So I'm not gonna talk too much uh, about the, the intricacies of what I'm doing. Hopefully you're about to see this and work it out for yourself as you're going forwards. But there we go, we've got another line there where it intersects I'd say that's a little bit higher than I'd like, never mind, but we're gonna carry on with it um, because I'm kind of engaged with the drawing now. And then the final one, same same again, just kind of practicing the same sort of process, still using those two planes. There we go, just drawing our X plane out like that, and then just tracking that same distance out. What we'll just about scraped it into the uh, side of the other shape, just about squeezed it on the page without it getting too big. I think I'm just about gonna get away with that. There we go, a third 
rectangular cuboid come across the bottom and these should be kind of the same as each other these uh, distances I actually think I've emphasized the height or the thickness of some of these a little bit in some cases but I mean that's the perils of trying to draw and teach at the same time so I'm just going to get my fine liner out again very quickly just go around to help pick out some of these edges and where the base is and stuff like that and once again I will try to upload a video on the use of line weight to kind of help pick out drawings and stuff uh, in the future sometime and I'll definitely take a lot more time than I'm doing uh, in that particular case. So I'm going to draw this third one up here because I'm running a little bit out of space and I'm going to try and draw it uh, quite close to the same size this time. So what I'm going to do is, is, is cheat a little bit. I'm going to use practice the, the drawing up here like this, practice to get my muscle memory right for distances and then just drop that line in like that. So that distance there and that distance there, I've dropped that in. And the same this side here, practicing that and then just drawing that in. I think it's about that sort of uh, proportion. We'll see how accurate we are in a, in a second. Okay, so let's just commit to this and draw these lines in and see how we've got them. So let's have a look, there's that top line there. Pretty good. And this side here, again, not too bad. It's a little bit longer, my one, than the one up there. We can always adjust that if we wanted to. Now you'll see in previous videos, the earlier one, uh, what I actually done uh, when I was drawing was drew the cross-sectional profile first like this, and we, we then extruded this back like that, okay? I think I've been enticed by the top of this object. I kind of liked, uh, the look of it first, I've started like that, but it does, does prove effectively there's multiple ways that you can go about the same sort of drawing. In this case, I'm starting from the top and then I'm going to work on different surfaces. But I'd say probably still the easiest way would be to draw this cross-sectional profile and then extrude it back to the back of the shape afterwards. So I'm just going to bring this down and what I'm going to do is basically create like a cuboid or a crate, a big crate that kind of encases the shape. Okay, we're going for the same sort of proportions. So I'm going to take that measurement there to about that point there and then just finish this off, draw these two surfaces in. There we are on the Z axis going back and the Y axis, uh, sorry, the X axis on the front like that to create a box. So what I've basically done is drawn a box going around the shape. Now what we're gonna do is just cut a section out of the front there. It looks like this is maybe, oh, let's have a little look, it's maybe about a fifth of the way across. So I'm gonna estimate this a little bit as to about there and it looks like these distances are regular. So that distance there is probably about the same as that distance there and there and there and there and so on and so forth. I've tried to keep these quite similar for you so that it doesn't uh, make things too complicated, at least in the early stages. So I'm gonna do that, take that distance there and then track it there and then take that across. Again, I'm looking at these parallel lines always to make sure that this is accurate and then do the same on the other side to try and make this uh, proportional like that. So there we go, we've got our cross-sectional profile drawn from that surface. The last thing we're gonna do is just take that point there and then take it to the back to create that basic sort of like uh, end shape, I suppose, for the shape there, okay? I wanna just go around with the highlighter before we draw our um, hole, sorry, the fine liner, before we draw our hole in the center, just so we can see that hopefully a little bit more clearly uh, than we did before and pick out some of those lines. There we go. And then finally, we're gonna work on the hole uh, on the top of the surface. Now we can see, hopefully from that, that hole is in the center. So once again, as I've done before, I'm gonna just draw a diagonal line going across to find out where my center is. And then I'm gonna do kind of like a union flag type of thing coming through the shape like this to find out where my center point is there. From that point then, I'm just gonna track out two distances either way like this to find um, where the edges of these points are. So I'm coming from the center point there and coming out just two distances like this because then I can place two parallel lines, one either side of the center point like this, and those two parallel lines are kind of effectively going through the shape like that. Now that distance there looks to be the same distance or similar distance to what it is from the side. I'd say it's maybe a little bit less on the edge. So there's my distance in from the edge, but it does look like this is symmetrical across that, that plane of symmetry there. So that distance there is gonna be tracked across to this side. So there we go. I've drawn a little shape like that in the inside. Let's just put a bit of line weight on there to show where some of those edges are. And then finally, because it does go through the shape like this, we're gonna draw a line down. Now in this particular case, we don't see where that ends because if we took that line across to the edge and went down to that point there and then took that line in, we basically, oh, I just about see it on mine, but it's effectively right there at the bottom part of the line there, so I don't see it in too much detail. So I'm gonna do my final object now and I'm gonna just 
pop it down here nice and small so we can fit it on the page and finish uh, our, our drawing for today. And I'm gonna start from the top and what I'm gonna do, looking like what we did before with our kind of X-ray vision, we're gonna go through and we can see that this is kind of a rectangular cuboid at the back with two kind of what look, look to be regular cubes stuck on the front. So I'm gonna start my drawing nice and small this time so I can fit it on the page. I'm just trying to work with proportion. It looks like that distance there is around about a quarter of the way across the object. So that distance there, if we track that across about four times, we'd end up about there. So I'm just gonna start with that top rectangle like this. There we go. And then to complete my rectangular cube, I'm just drawing three parallel lines down. It's useful to draw the lines together if they're on the same plane like this, because your hand, again, will get the muscle memory and get practiced at drawing that shape. In terms of proportion, it looks like this is maybe about two thirds of the distance down as to what it is across. So the, uh, the Y plane, about two thirds the distance of the X plane there. Drawing that line there parallel on the Z and parallel on the X like this to give me my first shape. So that's kind of me looking through the shape like that. Now we can see these regular cubes on the front appear to be that sort of distance in height and width and depth. So we're just gonna track that in like this and say about there is where my cube is gonna be. Now rather than drawing one cube at a time, what I'm gonna do is draw a line across parallel with the base like this and draw a big block going across the front of the shape first. So I'm just drawing one cube on the side, trying to keep this uh, the um, Z plane and Y plane the same, so it does look like a square on the front like this, and then just take that across to the other side, one and two like that, parallel with each other, and then again, come out from the other side. So what we've got effectively is we put a big long rectangular cuboid on the front of our shape there. Now what I'm gonna do is just cut two sections out of it. So we've got one distance there, like that, and we're just gonna put a line down and a line in. So we've got one cube just put onto the side like that. We're cutting out of this middle part here, and I'm gonna do the same on the other side. So I'm using that same distance there, and coming down like this, and then across into the shape there, and into the shape there, trying to be parallel, and then just showing the inside part of that cube at the back. This is probably, to watch, is probably the hardest one to kind of uh, understand as to what I've done there, because there's a lot of kind of construction lines going on. Hopefully by going around the shape like this in the fine liner, we'll be able to see this a little bit clearer as to actually what's going on with the shape. But we're gonna have a little look at the shape uh, at the top again as well. So what we've basically done is we drew a rectangle uh, shape or rectangular cuboid going around like this and you can see I chopped out these boxes We've got one box there and we've got one box there like that Basically getting rid of this middle part of space here. This is that, that void in the center of the shape So there we go. There's the four shapes have a little go at those hope your practicing goes well And I hope your drawings are improving